I've got a girder loaded on my saw horses. I'm underneath the sawmill shed, just got a little bit of area to work in, but I, at least I'm under the roof, I'm in the shade, and I'm gonna start working this girder out. I'll clean it up with a wire brush, and then I'll start planting it. I had these setting up on some uh, six by sixes down close to the ground. The rain caused a lot of dirt to splash up on them, and I don't really wanna have that on there when I start planting these. So I'll give this a good clean up. On all four sides of it. It's always good to have your your logs or whatever you're working to be clean of dirt. It saves the edge of your tools. I'm working this timber out just like I would be working a, a log. I actually have the outside, what I'm going to allow to be the outside face of the log up because on this particular project, the outside will be the control. On my log cabins, I always use the inside face of the log as control, but in this particular case, I'll use the outside, and I've got my level set here in about the middle of the length, and underneath back here, I've got a little wedge driven under to raise this end of the, of the timber up to where I can rock it, and I have a wedge on the other end that I can tap and tilt the log or the timber back and forth. I think I'm pretty close to being in the center and having it level. We'll look and see. That's pretty close. And I'll take my level and I'll go to either end and I'll check to see what I'll need to do to get those ends trued up with the middle here. That's pretty close. It's a little bit heavy on this side. I'll need to take a little bit of wood off this side when I plane it. And this end's pretty close. I'll have to do just a little bit of shaving here, but it's not going to be much. And I'll have all these three points uh, trued together. This timber, as of now, is 18 foot long, and I only need 16 foot. That's the length of my bridge. I'm going to cut some of this timber off to shorten the length of it a little bit. I don't need this full length. I have this area of the timber trued up. Actually, I've got both ends. I just finished this one, and the other end is, is trued up. I've got a six inch post. This will actually be cut off right here, about four inches from what I've got left here. And I've got a six inch post that will set on top. Now this area here has all got to be planed and trued up also. But I'll true this outside face up when I get to working on this side. I'll put my square on there and I can work this area right in here to where I'm square off of this outside face. And when my post goes on here, there'll be a tenon or a mortise cut in here for the tenon on the post. And so the post will set, the, the tenon of the post will set down in that mortise. There will be four posts all total. I'll have one on either end, and then there's two that's divided out equally. Actually, my number to the center of this post is five foot four from either end. And this area also will be true. I've already got this plane, hand plane down to where it's true. And there'll be a six inch post set on top of the, of the girder with the mortises, just like all of them will have a tenon on them. And I've got one more spot that I need to true up. I'll just check this area with my level. It's got to have a little bit more taken off this edge than the other three places did. Just a little bit. I'm just going to use my little small power planter to do that. I'm just going to take a little bitty bit at a time because I don't want to take too much. And just keep checking that. It's getting closer. Now I can take my hand plane and finish that up. I 
Okay, that's getting pretty close. I believe it'll work. You can see that little bit of light that's coming underneath the edge of that square. That's how much I need to take off of this side over here so that the top will be square with the side. That light kind of makes it look worse than it actually is. It's about a 32nd of an inch. Working this oak, you really want your tools sharp. I'm just, just about got that right there. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. I have my plane set really, really light. You know, I think I can live with that. I think that'll work. I started cutting the mortises out on the top side of this timber. This timber will be on the west side of the bridge. I made a note there so I wouldn't get messed up and this is the outside. So I've told you that I'm laying everything from the outside in this particular case. And so these mortises were laid out from the outside. I came in two inches and four inches and then I centered the tenon in the area that I have here. I'm cutting all the mortises out on the girders for the tenons that the post will set down in here. And this is the, where I was telling you, on the one where I came back an inch and a quarter before I cut the start on the tenon. And I've also, just for safety's sake, since I do have this short bit of end grain here, I've run some torque screws in here on, this is the, out, the outside and the inside, just to make sure that doesn't break loose. I've got two or three of these cut out. It's a little bit slow to cut them out because there's a lot of chiseling to have to do. I have one laid out here. My lines actually went ahead and scored them. And I've got some real faint lines right here and here, which will be a guide for me when I start to drill down to remove the waste. This is the area on the outside that I trued up and with my square, I, I laid it across this area, and the top here is square with this side here. Now, I'm coming in two inches and four inches because that's the width or the thickness of my tenon. And I'm gonna mark this with this little fine point felt tip pin so that it'll actually show up a little bit better on the camera. I'm marking it two inches and four inches. Maybe that'll show a little better. And two inches. And four inches. Get 
that a little bit better. Then I can take my little square, get that right on the line, or on my points here, and I'll mark this all the way down. That's a little bit darker than a pencil mark. And I have a mark here, which is actually the center of my tenon. And this tenon was four and 15 sixteenths wide. So I split the difference on that. And I came back and I marked each end of the tenon. And I'll draw that so it'll show up a little bit better. Now I'm using an inch bit. And there's a line right here that's a little bit over half inch which would be half the diameter of the bit because I don't want that bit running right up on the edge of my line there and I'll go ahead and mark that and that will give me something to set my point on when I start to drill and I've also come in from the end of the tenon the same distance and I'll mark that so you can see it did it on both sides here. Now when I start to drill these, I'll drill these four corners first. And then I'll just move my drill bit down this line here. I can't really drill an overlapping hole very well. It wants to wander off when I do that. I'm taking my awl and I'm gonna make a little bit of a point there so that when I set my auger bit there, I won't be so apt to wander off. Now I'm just doing the, the four corners first. I'm using my bigger Dewalt half inch drive drill to drill these. This turns slower and that gives me a little bit more control. But I went ahead and made my little point there so that I can set the point of my auger there. Now to be able to drill straight down is something that you kind of acquire the knack to do. You can set a speed square up there and just bring your bit over against that and try to hold it as steady as you can. And you're having to do this two different directions. So what I have done over the years, I've just kind of developed an eye to be able to drill fairly straight down. And that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm just gonna sit down on this and just kind of get my bit started real slowly. And it's a sharp bit. And I can see I'm just away from the line here and just away from the line here. That's pretty close there. I can lean it just a little bit there and start my, my hole. Now I've got a piece of tape on my bit to where I'll need to stop. I'm drilling these five and a quarter inches deep. Kind of wobbling around just a little bit. As I get, I get close to my tape, I slow down because I don't want to go too deep. Just kind of keep the shavings and the chips back out of the way. And I'm getting really close. Okay.
I've got the four corners drilled and I have my little guideline here and I'm just going to come back there and set that on there and get the drill going in the right direction. Now I could switch to a smaller bit because I'm pretty sure that that bit will want to move from where I started in such a little bit of a amount of wood there. It doesn't want to stay where you start off with. So I can go with a smaller bit and get a little bit more of that wood out. This whole thing will have to be chiseled to clean out all the, the shoulders up on it. Okay, I've got all the holes drilled out here. I had one that got a little bit close, but actually I looked at it and I did not go across my score line. And I just kind of cleaned out some of the, the wood chips. I just used a, my old shop vac to uh, vacuum that out. Now I'll start with a chisel and I'll just start taking this wood out. And then I'll set my combination square down and start making sure that I'm coming square off of the, the top edge of this girder. All right, I'm going to take a sharp chisel and just begin to chop some of this stuff out. You'll have quite a bit of waste to get rid of in the middle. And just start taking out what doesn't belong. I'm staying away from the line when I'm chopping this stuff loose because I don't want to get over on that. I know that's a little bit dark down in there, so it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to shine a light. You can kind of see the shoulders there where I've trimmed that down. And I want this edge, that shoulder going down, I want it to be square off of the top. You just have to kind of work that just a little at a time till you get there. When you're working your way into these corners right here, you can use uh, just a a timber frame chisel. This is an inch. My mortises are actually two inches wide. Now you can just work your way back up to this line here with just a regular chisel and also have a little small corner chisel that you can use just to kind of get started. I'll put it right here. I'm just going to do just a little light work with it. And then I can come back with my inch chisel and start working all this corner out. Now I'll slowly work my way back to this line that I have scored. And I'll be checking that with the, my combination square just to see how square off the top that I am going straight down. And I want to keep the insides of this as square off the top as I possibly can because that ensures a tighter fit when the tendon goes in here because I want my post that sits on top of this to be pretty secure and not be wobbling around. So I'm just gonna take my time and work my way back to these lines and checking it to make sure that I'm going square off the top. I have three sides here cleaned up. I've just got the one side yet to go and I'm really close to my line. So I'm just gonna take a two inch chisel, set it right in my little score marks just give it a light tap with my mallet. And I'm just going to work my way down that score line. Right up into the corner there. I don't want to get too carried away with that. I'm having to stand on my little stool get me up here high enough so I can see what I'm doing where I can get a little force on that. I'm just taking a little shavings off. Now this being oak, it doesn't, it doesn't work as easy as a softer wood like the pine that I'm normally used to working with or cedar. 
I'm just being very careful there to clean that up. I'm not going all the way down. It's going to go just part of the way. And I'll set my little combination square back about an inch or so. And I can check and see if I'm staying square off the top of this with my sides. And that seems to be running pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my two inch chisel. And just start working that down. And check it periodically. Going down to two or so. I think that's going to work. Get some of this chips out of there. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I put this aside until I get other pieces cut out. I'm going to spray it with boiled linseed oil and I'm mixing this about two-thirds and one-third say two-thirds of a gallon of linseed oil and a third of a gallon of paint thinner or mineral spirits and that seems to dilute it just enough to where it penetrates and soaks in a little deeper so I'm just going to give this a good heavy squirt and let that start doing its thing I'll do all four sides of it. I'm putting it on pretty liberally. It will change the color just a little bit. Kind of give it a, more of a golden color. Now I'll let that sit there and dry. And then I'll turn it over and get the bottom side. I've already got these two done. And I've got the, the bottom side up on them. 